Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you guys are from up north? Where are how many of you guys had uh, gardens up north? How many of you try to plant gardens down here in Florida? Did you notice there's a difference between how things grow down here? Do you guys realize that when God created the world and Adam and Eve sinned, one of the uh, repercussions of that is that God cursed the ground? Sometimes I think he didn't remove that curse down here in Florida. <laughs> I bring that to you to get you to understand what it must have been like if you planted down here for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 seasons and you realize what a struggle it is sometimes to get stuff to grow. Can you imagine living 900 years having the ground cursed and how hard that would make your work? Okay. But they did it. Bring that to you because when Noah was born, his father said, This child will bring us comfort due to our hard toil because the Lord cursed the ground. Noah. What do you know about Noah? Besides, he built an ark. <laughs> 600 years old. Hey, that's a, that's, a, that's a powerful man. He was 600 years old when he built the ark. What else do you know about Noah? He's a pretty good leader, yeah? That's what I'm looking for. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a righteous man. You're familiar with the story of Noah and what was going to happen during his lifetime, God tells him that he needs to build a boat because there's going to be a flood. Let's look at these texts. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 5. Lester read verses 28 and 29. Um, you know what takes place in a verses prior to this, there's a specific word for it. It's called genealogy. Anybody here enjoy reading genealogies? There you go. We've got a couple of people. Listen, I hated reading genealogies <laughs> until I actually started reading them and realizing there's a lot of information that you can get. And that if you don't know the genealogy, there's a lot of scripture you're not going to understand uh, the meaning behind, how it takes place, uh, questions that come up. <laughs> Lamech lived 182 years and had a son. He called his name Noah, saying, This one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. After he begot Noah... Lamech lived 595 years and had sons and daughters. And so all the days of Lamech were what? 777 years and he died. 777. Listen, he said, wow, but you realize this guy died prematurely. Because everybody before him was living to 800 and 900 years. Right? But we look at 700 years and go, wow, because that's a long time. Verse 32, and Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Or however you say that last name. Okay, so Noah was 500 years old, and if his wife was anywhere close to his age, let's say she was 8 years younger than him, she was still, what, 492? Can you imagine bearing a child at 492 years old? Not just one, but three. Okay, now, I, I bring this up to you because I've said uh, this over and over again. When you start to think about the antediluvian world, if they were able to bear kids at 100 years old and he's still bearing kids at 500, 600 years old, 
It only took nine months to have a baby, right? That never changed. Nine months. How many children could you have in 500 years? Do you understand where Cain got his wife from? That was the last thing that I spoke of. Second to last thing when it came to Genesis. Okay. Do you see how fast the earth could be populated? Okay. And how big these families got? Grandkids, great grandkids, great 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 grandkids. Keep on going. I'm saying. So it gives you an understanding how quickly the earth could be populated. Now, when God made Adam and Eve, did they come out from God's hand pure? Yes. And did everything work correctly? Yes. Their minds, how much use of their minds did they have? Okay, so now sometimes you read a verse like this where he talks about Noah giving him comfort because of how hard their work was. Now, if you're really smart, in our day and age, how much of your brain do you use? Can we say 15% or less? Okay, 15% or less? We'll, we'll go with that number, 15%. So that still means there's, what, 85% of this stuff up in here that's just like jellified and doing nothing? Can you imagine what it would be like if you had 100% use of your brain? Look at what we've been able to accomplish with 15% of our brain. So I bring this to you to get you to think, what was life like for them back then? Were they cave people? Were they really living in uh, uh, an untechnological age? Do you ever wonder why God wiped them out so completely there's nothing left? You understand? I mean, like, nothing left to give us an idea of what it was like before the flood. And what we do find doesn't make a lot of sense to us. If you had 100% use of your brain and you lived for 800, 900 years, what could you accomplish? Think of what music was like back then. You go to play a piece on a piano, how long does it usually take you to learn how to play it? She sight reads it perfectly yeah. initially. I can say it. But it takes a while to get it right. Can you imagine if you had 300 years to study one piece? <laughs> <laughs> How good you could become at that piece? You know what I'm saying? We, we can't even imagine what it would be like to live that long. Okay? We think 120 years, man, that's something. And you don't usually meet 120 year olds, okay? But, there's a lot of 100 year olds. That's Florida Hospital's slogan. Healthy 100, right? I'm set by nine. Okay? Do you know how long Adam lived? He lived over 900 years old. Okay? He was around almost from the beginning to the end. Okay? Adam. That long. Now listen. The Bible tells you here that God looked down and he saw that, what was the state of mankind? That every thought of their imagination, their imagination was evil continuously. Now listen, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man, right? Now we look at our world today and think it's bad, right? But has God wiped us out yet? So apparently it's not as bad as what it was in the days of Noah. The evil that they were able to do surpasses anything we've come up with. Now we've come up with the atom bomb. That's pretty evil, don't you think? But yet God has continued to allow us to live. So I want you to think of what it would be like to live back then. And what it'd be like for Noah? Also, I bring all this to you because I'm going to ask you a question and see how you answer it. Okay? Chapter 6, verse 1 says, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they 
that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. God sees this and God says, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be what? 120 years. Verse 4. There were what? Giants. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Who were the sons of God, and who were the daughters of men? Now, I've read in the past that the sons of God were angels, and they were having relations with humans, and that's where the giants came from. I had a hard time believing that. Because I read in the New Testament that there's not going to be marriage in heaven. They will be just like the angels of God. You understand what that means? And you just read that those sons of God took wives. If they were angels, why would they need wives? So who were the sons of God? Those who are loyal to God. Oh, hold on. I, uh, one at a time. Mary Jane? If we trust in the Lord, we are children of God. So I would say those sons of God were people that trusted in the Lord. The daughters of men were perhaps the unsaved, the people that didn't understand. Very well said. Now, remember what I said about genealogies? Why they're so important? What happens before the story of Noah himself? What was the 14, 15 verses before that? Genealogies, right? You trace that genealogy all the way back to Seth. Was Seth Adam's first, firstborn? Okay, you go to the chapter before that and you see a whole other set of genealogies. And it's the genealogy of Cain. The sons of God. The genealogy of Seth. The daughters of men, the genealogy of Cain. If you could have a baby in nine months, and you were having babies for hundreds of years, how fast could you populate your neighborhood? Okay? So, the answer to this question is, who are the sons of God, who are the daughters of men? Is what Mary Jane said. It was those that followed God, and those that did not. Now, if you look at this great controversy from the beginning, it started where? On this earth? It started in heaven, right? The controversy between Lucifer and Jesus himself. Lucifer had followers that followed him. They started a rebellion in heaven. And what happened? Did it work out well for them? They got kicked out. No more place found for them in all of heaven. Where'd they go? Here on this earth. Okay, and so this earth would be the planet where this great controversy would be played out. So once Adam sinned, and it says after he sinned, he knew his wife and she bore a child, right? And after they started to have babies, they were in a fallen state, is that right? Yeah. So there was now sin that separated them from God. God had cursed the earth. He gave punishments to Adam, gave punishments to Eve, told the devil and the serpent what was going to happen to him. Did the devil go away? No. Right, so once they started having children, what do you think the devil's focus was on? So there you have the story of Cain and Abel. Abel was a son of God. Cain was a son of the devil. Jesus told the scribes and the Pharisees, the leaders of his day, who their father was. Who was their father? Jesus said, I know who my father is, and your father is no. the devil. Satan has his children, and Jesus has his children. It's always been that way, and it'll be that way all the way to the end when he comes. And so you see here, in these sets of verses, the end of the world. Jesus has his followers, and the devil has his followers. 
They think the world is just going to continue on the way it always has. The end's not going to come. It's been like this since we can remember. And we can remember a lot because we live 800, 900 years. Did they ever see rain? What do you think they thought when, when Myra, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. What do you think they thought when they heard, it's going to rain? And they said, what's rain? Water's going to fall from the sky. No, water comes up from the earth. It doesn't fall from the sky. And then you see this guy building a big old boat. Why? Because it's going to rain. It's never rained. Was Moses the only, or Noah, was Noah the only one that actually spoke for God? Was he the only prophet in the antediluvian world? Who came before him? Methuselah. Methuselah? Who came before Methuselah? Starts with an E. No. Enoch. Do you know that some of the things that Enoch spoke about is recorded for us in the book of Jude? That's how we know that Enoch was a prophet of God. And that Enoch told the people the truth about God. Listen, when Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. It doesn't end there. It says that they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. What does that mean, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage? That life was just going on as normal, right? Now see, I've read that part, and then I read Revelation where it talks about the seven last plagues, and I just don't see that being how you cannot see something's going to happen. But listen, the ability for the fallen human to be deceived and self-deceived is greater than we can ever imagine. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what kind of changes come, we just view it as, well, this is just the way things are. Okay? And it just continues to go on. And it will always go on. Now, do you believe that there are people in, in, in Noah's day that didn't believe in God? How many people were saved in his day? So, was that the only people that believed in God in that whole world? Was, was eight? That's right, because people were dying, right? Okay? And so, there were those who were following God, who were continuing the line of the sons of God. Methuselah, what happened to him? He died before the flood, right? And he died in the faith of Christ. And so he will be resurrected. Can you imagine what it's going to be like on Resurrection Day to see people from the world before the flood? See people from the world before the flood. <laughs> So, the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. How do you go from a lifespan of 7, 8, 900 years to 120 years? Ricky, what do you think? Oh, you know the answer. You're just not coming up. How do you get them to go from... So, did the flood change their lifespan? Yeah. Yes. No. How could water covering the earth change their lifespan? No, the answer, you're saying that the flood did. What you're saying is true. Ricky, what changed their lifespan? What they ate. Right? The flood didn't do that. They decided what they were going to, you know what I'm saying? The flood just covered the earth and wiped out what God wanted what to be wiped out. But after the flood, their lifespan changed and it started to decrease. Why? Well, they lost their protective covering over the earth for one. Yeah. Okay. Which Everything changed. Right. right. And so God was able to take that lifespan from seven, eight, nine, and bring it, start to bring it down and bring it down. Yes. I agree with that. Amen. So listen. So it says there were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward. Afterward what? 
There were giants in those days and also afterward. Afterward what? After the flood. There you go. Very good. Because who's the next giant that you read about? Goliath. Goliath. He was from the bloodlines of, but you have to understand that it had to come through one of those children. Yeah. Were all of those kids Ooh, yeah. uh, sold out to God? No. no. No? Right? Understand? Now listen. If Adam and his children were a lot bigger than we were, and they were actually giants that were bigger than them, you thought about that? We would look at them and say, they're giants. No. I look at Shaquille O'Neal and say, he's a giant. <laughs> but if they were giants to people that were as big as Adam and Eve, how big were they? Okay? That world that they lived in is so totally different from ours, we can't even imagine. We don't give much thought to it. But this is what we were supposed to be. We were supposed to be this small, this weak, with only 8 to 15% use of our brains. That's not what God created us for. <laughs> so, there are giants on the earth, in those days and afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men of, who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man, this is verse 5, was great in the earth, and that every what? Imagination, my version says intent. Every intent of their heart was wicked. Every single thought. Now, can you imagine the wicked schemes you could devise with that much intelligence and with that much longevity of life? You understand how violence overtook the earth? Now, look, there are those here who lived through the experience of World War II. And that was horrible. And yet, that wasn't enough for God to end this. You thought about that? Compare that to what God saw in the days of Noah. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord, this is a strange verse, and the Lord was what? And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. And so the Lord said, I will what? Destroy, Destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and what? Why did he have to destroy the beasts? Animal husbandry gone awry. Yes. <laughs> Destroy man and beast and birds of the air, but he didn't destroy the things that lived under the water. Fresh water, maybe. Why? Here's the question. Was, was, was the Tyrannosaurus Rex a real creature? You got fossil records of it, right? Now, did God make a man-eating creature when he created in the first part of Genesis? No. Well, how did you get that thing to go from what God made to what it was? Did you? Mrs. White talks about this amalgamation. It's the same thing that's going on today with genetic modification. This is why I tell you, if they had 100% use of their brains, and look what we're able to do today, and look at where we're at with genetic modifications, okay? And if they were able to take what God made and turn it into something like what we see in the fossil record? Do you understand why God looked down and he was sorry for making mankind? And that it had to end or else we would have actually have ended it ourselves? And we're getting to that point where we're able to do that now again. We have the power to destroy the world. And this is one of the things that we say why we're living in the last days. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Okay. 
Verse 7, so the Lord said, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the earth, both men and beasts, creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have what? Amen. Why would he be sorry that he made the bird or the creeping thing or the animals? When you get done with the creation week, he looked down and he saw and he said that everything was very good. Not just good, but very good. And now he's sorry that he made them. Something changed in both man and beast, in both the human and the animal kingdom. What changed? It wasn't that God did something, it was that the humans did something. Do we affect our environment today? Yes. Do we change the world today? Yes. yes, and there's no getting around that. Think of what would happen if you were able to as Miss White puts it, the amalgamation of messing with DNA, okay, and taking what God made and turning it into something monstrous. Verse 8, I love this verse, because this is one of the first times you find this word grace. Noah found what? Grace. grace in the eyes of the Lord. Grace. The people in Noah's day, how would they be saved? Did they work themselves into the ark? They had to believe they were saved by faith and by grace. Noah telling them it's going to rain, it's going to flood the earth, it's going to destroy everything. And they're going, what's rain? Never seen it. Don't believe it. And you want me to get inside this boat? That would take faith. Right? It's the same thing that God asks of us today. To believe Him and have faith. And He shows us grace. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a what? A righteous or just man. Perfect in his generations. Why? Because Noah walked with God. How was Noah perfect? How was Noah righteous? The same way we are. Because you find out after the flood that he had a little bit of a drinking problem. Okay? Noah found righteousness the same way you and I find righteousness. Righteousness only comes from one who is righteous. Are any of us righteous in and of ourselves? No. Okay, after the fall, was anybody righteous in and of themselves? No. Righteousness comes from Jesus Christ. They had to accept that righteousness, believe in that righteousness, and they received it. The same way we do. Verse 11, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. How many, how many times can they repeat that and say the same thing? What do you get off of that? You get the earth was corrupt, it was really bad, it was bad to the point where God said, this can't stay the way it is. And God had to step in. Does God step into human affairs? Yes. Does He step into our history? Yes. Yes. And He has done it over and over and over again. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. And then he gives Noah instruction. You wonder if they had big boats back then. He didn't have oceans. They were like, oh, I'll take them all. 